Hi, welcome back. In this unit of philosophical foundations of Gandhian thought, we will discuss the concept of Sarvodaya. Gandhi's primary concern was to build an unviolent, peaceful and progressive society with a humanistic agenda. An unviolent society is impossible so long as the wide gulf between the rich and the hungry millions persist. So, he wanted to establish egalitarian ideals in a society which has a basic economic, social and political equity as ingredients and supported by a fundamental equality among all citizens. Gandhian Sarvodaya is the application of the principle of nonviolence in the transformation of societies from their present form towards a more balanced, inclusive and egalitarian form in which there is social justice for all. He visualizes an integral development in society through Sarvodaya. It consists of the welfare of all beings. It is not only stands for the welfare of all, but visualizes a world order based on equality. It is a spiritual and moral approach to the problems of mankind. The idea of Sarvodaya is the apex of Gandhian socialism. It advocates the concept of an organic unity where all individuals have equal importance and the rise of everyone is dependent on the rise of every other. Gandhi's Sarvodaya ideal thus implies universal welfare and integrated development of all. It is a philosophy which provides a check against the imperfections of the human mind and ensures uniform development of all. The essence of Gandhian philosophy of Sarvodaya can be traced to the central teachings of India's spiritual thought. According to Jayan Mohandi, the philosophy of Sarvodaya is not a set of dogmas. In its essence, it is a compatible with an attempt of the spirit to prevail over matter and to socialize itself. Through Sarvodaya, he wanted to rebuild the nation from the bottom upwards and establish a new social order based on freedom, justice, equality and fraternity. Genesis and meaning of Sarvodaya. The word Sarvodaya is a Sanskrit word and it comprises two terms, Sarva which means all and Udaya which means rising. Thus, the etymological meaning of Sarvodaya is the rising of all. Gandhi's definition of Sarvodaya means universal upliftment or welfare of all and not just the welfare or greatest happiness of the greatest number. Sarvodaya aims not at the rows of a few or many or for the rise of the greatest number. It stands for the good of one and all, of the high and the low, of the strong and the weak, the intelligent as well as the dull. The utilitarian school supports the majority, totally neglecting the minority. Gandhi said, I do not believe in the doctrine of the greatest good of the greatest number. It means in its nakedness that in order to achieve the supposed good of 51 percent of the interest of 49 percent may be or rather should be sacrificed. It is a real dignified human doctrine is the greatest good of all and this can only be achieved by uttermost self-sacrifice. In comparison with Sarvodaya, it shows a lack of dignity and humanity because Sarvodaya advocates the welfare of all irrespective of class, caste, creed, color, race or religion. It rejects the theories which aim at the joy of a few. It is a more dignified and humane doctrine. According to Gandhi, the good of all can be achieved only when each individual is working for the welfare of all. It is also true that Sarvodaya includes the utilitarian maxim of the greatest good of the greatest number. But the basic difference between Sarvodaya philosophy and utilitarianism is that whereas the latter never conceives the possibility of self-sacrifice, the sacrifice of self-interest for the good of others is the cornerstone of Sarvodaya. The morality of utilitarianism would certainly differ from the morality of Sarvodaya, which in Gandhian thought is related to ahimsa and truth. Thus, Sarvodaya has a wider connotation as it conceives of assimilation of all and not only of many or most. The term Sarvodaya commands a twofold meaning. First, it means making all happy 
by removing suffering and poverty with the help of scientific knowledge. Second, it means establishing a world government full of divinity, kindness and equality. Apart from connoting the welfare of all, Sarvodaya commands two more meanings, namely universal welfare and the integrated development of all. When Gandhi championed the cause of Sarvodaya, he had before him not only the objective of material welfare of all, but also the ethical spiritual development of all the people. Thus, it stood for all round development of all the individuals in society. Sources of Sarvodaya As Gandhi claims, Sarvodaya is not a new approach that he is offering. It is on the hand rooted in the ancient Indian tradition and many other sources. Rushkin's unto this last. Gandhian philosophy of Sarvodaya can be traced to the central teaching of India's spiritual and religious heritage. But he admits the fact that he had immediate inspiration from Rushkin's unto this last, which the term Sarvodaya is his rendering. Gandhi called one of the chapters of his autobiography, the magic spell of the book, wherein he describes the effects of Rushkin's unto this last. He later translated it into Gujarati, titled it Sarvodaya. It is a book from which Gandhi drew great inspiration and he at once determined to change his view of life in line with the ideal embodied in Rushkin's book Unto This Last. According to Gandhi, the central teachings of Unto This Last are that the good of the individual is contained in the good of all, that a lawyer's work has the same value as the barber's in as much as all have the same right of earning their livelihood from their work. That a life of laborer, that is the life of the tiller of the soil and the handicraftsman is a life worth living. He further acknowledged, the first of these I knew, second I had dimly realized, the third had never occurred to me. Unto this last made it clear as daylight for me that the second and third were contained in the first. I arose with the dawn ready to reduce this principle to practice. Thus, we see that Rushkin's unto this last directly or indirectly had a profound influence on Gandhi in fulfilling the ideal of Sarvodaya. Tolstoy's The Kingdom of God is Within You. Tolstoy's simplicity of life and purity of purpose influenced Gandhi very much. Gandhian ideal of Sarvodaya comes very close to anarchism of Tolstoy. The pure ideal of Gandhi's conception of Sarvodaya is an ideal of philosophical anarchism, a stateless society marked by voluntary cooperation, profound faith in God, inherent aversion to violence, deep-rooted belief in the dignity of man led the two philosophers to the same goal, Thoreau's civil disobedience. Like Thoreau, Gandhi also held that the democracy can be realized only in a stateless society based on truth and nonviolence, and Gandhi described it as Sarvodaya, which promotes not only social welfare but spiritual uplifting. Thus, Gandhi heard an echo of his own thought in Thoreau, Bhagavad Gita. Apart from Rushkin's Unto This Last, Gandhi drew his primary strength and inspiration from the Bhagavad Gita to Sarvodaya ideal. The sole aim of Gita is to suppress unrighteousness and to establish dharma. It wants to bring prosperity and peace to all. It presents in concise form the universal brotherhood of all beings. It also highlights the importance of selfless service for the promotion of the whole creation. This Gita preaches the message of the welfare of all or Sarvodaya. Buddhism and Jainism Gandhi was highly influenced and deeply impressed by the Buddhist philosophy which preached universal love, non-injury to living beings, sacrifice and renunciation for the sake of promoting the welfare of all. The ideal of welfare of all forms the cornerstone of the Jain thought. According to Jainism, it is the duty to devote our life for showering happiness on all the beings of the whole universe. Apart from the above mentioned works and religions, 
Gandhian concept of Sarvodaya was also influenced by Vaishnavism, Swarashtrianism, Islam and Christianity. For Gandhi, man is a supreme consideration and so Sarvodaya philosophy aims at the moral and spiritual regeneration of man who then becomes capable of sacrificing his own interest for the good of the society. This was made it clear by in a nonviolent society, there can be no ideal other than Sarvodaya to be pursued as the culture of nonviolence demands that the good of the last and the lowest in the social ladder deserves to claim the first attention in terms of the starting point. Sarvodaya is a spiritual idea according to which socio, politico, economic and ethico religious forces work together in harmony to facilitate the attainment of the aspirations of each and every individual in the society. A study on the nature of Gandhian Sarvodaya society reveals his clear cut views on social, political and economic orders which are closely interrelated and interdependent. Sarvodaya social order. Gandhi had a clear vision and a definite approach to the problem which faced India during his time. Indian society was full of deep rooted evils like caste conflicts, child marriages, untouchability, sadi, parda, negation of education to women, dowry, polygamy, corruption, exploitation, etc. Hence, it degenerated politically, socially and economically. Gandhi tried to find immediate solutions to these problems through his philosophy of Sarvodaya. He wanted a new social order in which the poor and downtrodden would get a just and equitable share in the gifts of nature and have the freedom to enjoy the fruits of labor. His theory of Sarvodaya advocates the emancipation and realization of the good of all human beings. It means a society based on universal brotherhood. In a Sarvodaya society, there is no scope for exploitation, discrimination, inequality and violence. The Sarvodaya society is an indivisible whole. It cannot be divided into watertight compartments called social, political and religious. He wanted the establishment of a social order based on the principle of truth and nonviolence. Self-sacrifice was the essence of such social order. The Sarvodaya social order based on nonviolence is founded on the recognition of altruistic element in human nature. Every individual is to be ready and willing to sacrifice his happiness for the sake of others. Everyone should follow the policy of giving and not taking. Our relationship with our fellow men in Gandhi's view presents us with an inescapable moral obligation towards them. We have no right to possess everything while millions remain unclothed and unfed. Sarvodaya philosophy aims at the moral and spiritual regeneration of man who then becomes capable of sacrificing his own interest for the good of the society. Gandhi argued that human culture and civilization are the product of this altruistic element in human nature. Gandhi not only evolved the concept of Sarvodaya but also tried to put it into practice. His first Sarvodaya community was the Phoenix settlement near Durban in 1904 followed by another one in 1910 in Johannesburg called Tolstoy Farm. The inmates of these settlements had to perform all work of running the farms so that they become self-reliant and self-sufficient. In fact, through the pursuit of Sarvodaya ideals, Gandhi wanted to chart out an alternative course of development, Sarvodaya political order. Through Sarvodaya, Gandhi wanted to reach the ultimate goal of the greatest good of all people. This good for him was not material well-being but moral well-being. So he approached politics also through morality. He held that moral nature is the real nature of the individual and this can be realized only through the practice of principles like truth and nonviolence. A survey of his views on political ideals like Satyagraha, Swaraj, Democracy, Ramarajya, Nationalism and Internationalism will reveal this fact. As stated by Professor Buddhadev Bhattacharya, Gandhi did not set himself to the task of systematic presentation of his views. 
about the nature of political activity. The construction of a system of political philosophy did never interest of bother him. His ideas were thrown off as comments on given concrete realities and were intended to give a new shape to events and for the remaking of man as a moral person. It is from his speeches, letters, interviews and writings that we understand his philosophy of state. According to Gandhi, an ideal state is governed by nonviolence and political power. Governing the state for him was a kind of organized violence. It is harmful because it destroys individuality which is the basis for all progress. So, he stood for decentralization of power which according to him guards the individual freedom. Gandhi maintains that political power is not an end in itself, but one of the means of enabling people to better their conditions in every department of life. He firmly believed in the sovereignty of the people based on the pure moral authority. So, he wanted to establish an unviolent society. He said, a society organized and run on the basis of complete nonviolence would be purest anarchy. In such a democratic society, equality is assured to the maximum extent and every individual enjoys full freedom. Gandhi wanted us to strive for this ultimate political ideal of stateless democracy. Gandhi's main aim was to establish Swaraj or self-rule in India and his greatness lies in giving a democratic orientation to the doctrine of Swaraj. For him, Swaraj means self-rule in social, economic, political and moral fields. It means people are the custodian of power. According to him, when necessities of life are guaranteed to poor as that of the rich, then only Swaraj will be completely attained. There will be no inequalities here and he calls this kind of Swaraj as Purna Swaraj or complete independence. He described it as Ramaraja, which was a moral kingdom where truth, love and respect for every living beings were of supreme importance. Hence, we can say that Gandhi's concept of Sarvodaya society was based on the principles of democracy such that every citizen is treated equally free to express his views and make decisions pertaining to the governance of the state. If state is coercive and repressive, then people will use the method of nonviolent non-cooperation to resist it. Gandhi frequently referred to this concept of true democracy as Ramarajya, wherein the nearest citizen could be sure of swift justice without much delay. Thus, through the political order of Sarvodaya, Gandhi wanted to replace manipulative politics of power by the participatory politics of cooperation. Sarvodaya economic order. Gandhi wanted to formulate an economic constitution for India where no one suffered from want of food, clothing or shelter. Hence, his Sarvodaya economy is founded on principles like simplicity, decentralization, self-sufficiency and cooperation. He wanted to bring about decentralization of economic power in the form of self-sufficient and self-governing village communities. Through this, he wanted to find immediate solution to the modern ills like economic exploitation, arbitrary state power and widening inequalities. Regional self-sufficiency is a must in the Sarvodaya economic order where people produce whatever they require. Production must be in accordance with the need and Gandhi preferred production by the masses rather than mass production. His aim for supporting decentralization of economic power is to serve the interest of all the people by preserving and protecting the village industries. He favored the centralization of heavy industries only if they did not hamper the growth of village and cottage industries. In Gandhi and Sarvodaya economic order, dependence on another is slavery and self-sufficiency is freedom. When every individual is self-sufficient, he can never become a burden to society. If the unit of society is a village with a manageable small group of people, the ideal of self-sufficiency becomes successful. Gandhi said, my idea of self-sufficiency is that every village must be self-sufficient in regard to food, cloth and other basic necessities. He opines that if every village is self-sustained 
and capable of managing its internal affairs, it can defend itself against the whole world. Gandhi always stressed that industrialization is not a solution to remove poverty. On the other hand, he had realized that mass production through industrialization is responsible for the global crisis and the mad rush for machinery is succeeding only in the creation of unequal distribution of wealth. He was not totally against all machinery. What he objected to was the craze for their multiplication. He welcomed establishment of factories under state control provided they worked for the benefit of mankind. Gandhi noticed that the deep rooted poverty of Indian masses is due to their departure from the Swadeshi principle in the economic sphere. Swadeshi in its economic connotation means the use of only those articles which were produced by one's immediate neighbor. Gandhi believes that the economic good of all lies in strictly practicing the principles of Swadeshi. It is a plea for protecting village industries and the Swadeshi doctrine was consistent with the law of love and humility. Gandhi's ethico-economic theory of trusteeship is based on the divine spirituality of man. This means that everyone must have enough for his or her needs. The aim of the trusteeship theory is to avoid concentration of economic power in the hands of the rich and this would reduce exploitation of the weak by the strong. Such an unviolent society helps to foster equality for all and lead to a Sarvodaya economic order. Sarvodaya, its relation with socialism and communism. Gandhi called himself a socialist and even a communist, but for him, socialism and communism were transcendental forms of egalitarian social philosophy that finds their fulfillment and culmination in Sarvodaya. The common point between Gandhi and Marx is the extreme concern of both for the suppressed and the oppressed, the resourceless and the ignorant, the dumb and the starving sections of humanity. Jay Prakash Narayan said, if we are true socialist, we would be true followers of Sarvodaya as well. But there are some differences between the two. Sarvodaya pleads for villagization. Secondly, socialism adheres to the concept of violent revolution in some cases, but Sarvodaya has no place for violence in its philosophy. The difference between Sarvodaya and communism are far more basic and fundamental. Communism advocates a violent technique for a change over in favor of an egalitarian society, a society free from exploitation and privilege. Sarvodaya, on the contrary, believes in persuasion and change of heart. Gandhi believed that Sarvodaya could be realized only by the application of a moral and ethical method. The advocates of Sarvodaya also differ from the communist and socialist in respect of the role of the state. Communist and socialist advocates concentration of economic power in the hands of the state. The concentration of both political and economic power in the hands of the state leads to too much bureaucratization, dehumanization and loss of individual freedom. But the advocates of Sarvodaya develops forms of socialist living through the voluntary endeavor of the people rather than seek to establish socialism by the use of power of the state. The remedy here is to establish people's socialism rather than state socialism. According to Anil Dutta Mishra, the Sarvodaya avoids the evils of legislature or legal coercion in democratic socialism and violence and physical coercion involved in communism. It relies on the technique of conversion for bringing about social transformation in the direction of a non-exploitative and egalitarian society. Thus, it would be safe to say that Sarvodaya is far nobler, subtler and has a deeper meaning than socialism or communism. Jaipargas Narayan writes, socialism as we understand it today cannot take mankind to the sublime goals of freedom, equality, brotherhood and peace. Socialism no doubt gives promise to bringing mankind closer to those goals 
than any other competing social philosophy. But I am prescribed that unless socialism is transformed into Sarvodaya, those goals would remain beyond its reach. As a universal ideal, it aims at not only fulfilling the minimum material needs, but also developing the ethico spiritual aspect of all people. It is a vision that looks forward to the creation of a welfare state and society. To conclude, we can say that Sarvodaya means an unviolent society where real Suraj would be established and people would be free from sickness and disease, pauperism and cowardice and equal opportunities would be provided for education. There would not be any untouchability. The large scale production and use of machines would be reduced to the minimum as small self-sufficient anti-craft units would be established. Sarvodaya as the name implies stand for all round well-being of all. It believes that institutions and relationships should be fashioned on the twin principles of truth and non-violence. Sarvodaya is capable of strengthening the forces of love, creativeness and joy of life. Sarvodaya takes a whole view of man and emphasizes his spiritual nature. In modern context, the concept of Sarvodaya can be interpreted as the awakening of one and all. Before we attend the next unit, please try to answer the following questions. Briefly explain the social, political and economic order of Sarvodaya. The idea of Sarvodaya is the apex of Gandhian socialism. Elucidate this statement. Examine the differences between Sarvodaya, socialism and communism. Explain the important sources of Gandhian concept of Sarvodaya. Examine the silent features of Sarvodaya. Books for references are Reading Gandhi, S.K. Jolly, Edited, Concept Publishing Company, New Delhi, Young India, M.K. Gandhi, 2-7-1931, Sarvodaya and Freedom, A Gandhi Appraisal, K.M. Rathinam Chetty, Discovery Publishing House, New Delhi, 1991, From Socialism to Sarvodaya, Jayprakash Narayan, Sarvaseva Sankh Pragashan, Varanasi, 1998, Hope you have enjoyed this session. See you next time. Until then, goodbye.